Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Unity Splines package. We're going to be implementing two game programming patterns, the factory pattern and the builder pattern. And we're going to be making an extension method and a few other cool things. Hit that like button on the way in. It's the most important metric that YouTube uses to push these videos out. And let's get started. Just before we get started here, I want to look at the gizmos quickly because when you're using the new input system with Unity, sometimes you're going to get these annoying icons. If you come in here and just click over the icon in the gizmo drop down, you can turn them off. It's better than turning off all of your gizmos. So just in case you didn't know, you could turn off the icons like that. That's how it's done. Well, let's jump over to our package manager and under our Unity registry, we're going to look for the splines package. I'm going to get the latest version of it here and install. And I'll just going to speed this up a little bit. And then uh, as soon as it's installed, we'll continue. Okay, let's start by creating an empty game object. I'll just call this path one. And what we're going to do is add a spline to it. Now, if you look over here, in our scene view, we can select our spline tool. And if we grab this new draw spline, you'll see the indicator there. Now I'm going to start mine off screen because I want to spawn most of my enemies that way. So I just click and drag to set the angle and then pick another spot, click and drag again. And I'm just going to draw, I think I'll go for kind of a figure eight. And so I'll get my enemies are going to path off the screen. And then I want them, if they're still alive at that point, to come back around and cross over again. And I'll set the whole thing into a, a loop. Now, once you get over towards the end here, all you have to do is just click on the end and that'll loop it. Now, as you can see, I can still keep drawing because you can create branches uh, with this package. But we're not going to do that in this video. All I just want is a simple loop and I'm just going to maybe adjust it to make it a little bit more smooth. It's not really necessary for the off screen parts. We know already in the game that the player is not going to see it. But you might want to make it a little, a little bit different. Um, and then instead of making another entire spline, I'm just going to duplicate this one. Now you could make something totally different. You could make as many splines as you want. Uh, I'm just going to make this one the same, but I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. And what we're going to do is spawn our enemies onto one or the other. It'll give the appearance of a fair amount of randomness by the time we're done. Now, I'm going to put both of these under a parent that I'm going to call the spawner. And we can have multiple spawners in the game, and every spawner can have its own paths to put enemies on. So. In this video, we're just going to make one and I'll just position it, you know, roughly ahead of the player. I don't really want too many enemies coming up from behind right now. One thing I wanted to do in the last video was add a shadow to the plane and I want to have shadows on the enemies too. So in Photoshop, I made this little shadow. I just took the sprite of my plane, made it black and shrunk it down. So we need to make it a sprite 2D. As you can see, it's transparent, semi-transparent. So I'm just going to drag it in and then let's just offset it a little bit and we'll give it a try and just make sure it looks okay. It's a little bit too big, of course, so let's shrink it down to the, to be the same uh, dimensions as our player, which was 0.3, same for our enemies. The offset doesn't have to be too much. Let's just go 0 0.05, I think. So I'm going to put a negative Y in here just so it's behind a little bit. I'm also just going to make sure that all the order for all of my sprites makes sense. Let's put the shadow less than the plane. Let's just set it at 75. Probably all the shadows could be around that. So that looks pretty good. Let's just uh, quickly play and make sure it looks all right. So yeah, it looks a lot better like that. As opposed to not having a shadow. So that's good. So the next thing to do here is let's create a really basic prefab for the enemy. We're going to use our builder to 
set all the properties of our enemy, but we might as well at least get an animation on here. Now, this will be our most basic enemy. Now, as you recall, we can just set all these to Sprite 2D and drag them in and it'll make an animation for us. So I'm just going to put them right on the model there. And this one was called the Hawker. Let's call it Hawker Red. And then my menu's off screen a little bit but i just need to set the sprite now as you can see again it's too big same problem we had with the player let's just resize it so it's the same rough dimensions and let's move it over here so i can see properly and let's just copy the shadow and paste it under the a and let's just get it in under the enemy there make sure the order is correct we'll set an uh let's set the enemy to be slightly higher up than the than the player so okay i'm just going to zero out all the values here and make sure that everything is set correctly including layer orders with that out of the way let's get on with some coding so first of all we need a scriptable object that will define all the data for our enemies we'll call it enemy type let's close all the other tabs here and all we need to know here is the base prefab um, let's put uh, a weapon prefab. We're going to come to that in part three, but we'll put it in there for now. And we can have a different speed. And let's create an asset menu for that so we can create them in the editor. That all looks great. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is make a builder. Now, a builder is a programming pattern that basically lets you call methods to assemble an object at runtime. So, all we really need to do in here is hold some fields that will we can pass in data as we're constructing it and then at the end we'll have a build method that'll put it all together and return us an instance of this enemy so fields we need basically they're going to line up with our data so we need the prefab we're going to tell it which spline to go on to we need the weapon prefab and the speed so let's set our base prefab here now you'll notice every call in a builder returns the builder back so in this way we can chain methods together now copilot's kind of figured out what i'm doing here and it's filling in all my methods so that's handy maybe too fast to read on the screen <laughs> uh, so here's our build method i'm going to write this one out because it's not quite right what the suggestion is so basically let's instantiate the base prefab and then we're going to we're going to add a spline animate component to it now, right now, I'm going to put in their get component method, uh, but that assumes that there is a spline animate component on our prefab. That might not be the case, so we're going to make an extension method in a moment. Carry on. All the all these properties on the spline animate component we're going to set manually here because wherever possible, I prefer to set things procedurally in code. It prevents user error. You could put you could set all this on the prefab, of course. And we're going to look at that in a second, just how you would do that. But suppose it got removed from your prefab, or suppose one of your designers changed one of the settings on the prefab. In this case, we're using 2D sprites. What if the alignment changed? That's the kind of tricky bug that you might not even notice until you've already shipped your game and the user reports it. So wherever possible, I try to prevent user errors. So what we want to do here is let's just assume there isn't a spline animate component on our prefab. Let's make an extension method that'll handle that for any component. So we'll use type T. It'll be a generic extension method. Now Copilot kind of has the idea here, but we can make this more concise than this. In fact, this could be a one-liner. So basically use the get component method that's already built into game objects. And if it's null, then we'll add one. This will make sure that we always only have one spline animate component on the prefab. And, you know, in the case where a prefab doesn't have one, we'll create it. Let's put this into its own namespace. Uh, it's a great, if you haven't already started building your own library of code, that's a, there's a great one for you. So let's import that uh, and use the get or add method. There we go. Now, let's just have a look at this component in the inspector. So 
we're setting all these properties already. Now you can see there's lots of options here for what you can do with the spline. As soon as you change the up axis, it'll change the forward axis for you. Let's have a look at these other settings here. What we wanted to do is we don't want to loop necessarily over time. Let's loop over for a speed and 10 is very fast. Let's go down to one maybe as a base speed. Um, yeah, so you can set it to loop. You can set it to run one time. There's other options there. So the next class that we need to create is a factory. A factory is basically a class that's going to return you a specific type of an object. In this case, enemies. So what we can do is make use of our builder. We'll just make one method in here called create enemy. Create enemy just needs to know the enemy type and where it's going, what spline it's going to go on. And then we can make use of our builder. So let's create a new instance of the builder. And with the builder, we already made all those methods. Let's just fill out the details of what we're building. Base prefab, spline, speed. We'll add weapon later. And then you just call the build method and return it. And we've got a game object being passed up back out of the factory. That's really as simple as this can be. We'll add some more methods here later. Uh, for example, what if we wanted to create an enemy that isn't on a spline? Maybe it's just a turret that sits in the game. And so the last thing we need is a spawner. So the spawner will use the factory to create things. And the spawner needs to know all about the paths that we already created. Uh, so those will be children of the spawner game object. It needs to know what enemy types to spawn on its paths. It needs to know how many enemies and how often to spawn them. So we don't need to fill out the spline container list because we can just use get components in children. Yeah, we need a reference to our factory because we're going to instantiate one. So in our on validate, let's get all of those splines that are children of this spawner. Then on start, let's just instantiate our factory. Let's make, let's just make this a one-liner. It can be an expression body method. Now, update. Let's increase our timer every frame. And then let's see. If we're not at the max amount of enemies and our timer is ready to spawn another one, let's spawn an enemy. So let's create a method for that. Whenever we spawn an enemy, set the timer back to zero. So spawn enemy. Uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward. We've already created all the methods for this. So let's get a random enemy type from our list, a random path from our list. Let's call our factory with those, with those details. We'll get back our enemy. Now, we don't really need this right now. We could put that and do something more with it. Uh, what if we wanted to, maybe we could create all of our enemies at runtime, for example. We could pool them. And then instead, our factory could actually instead of instantiating them with the builder every time, right when we start the level, it could instantiate all of them and put them in a pool. Something to think about. Okay, that's it for the enemy spawner. All we have to do is come back into the game, refresh our code, and let's add that component to our enemy spawner game object. There we go. All we really have to do here is define the type unless we want to change these other settings. So let's make a new folder to hold our enemy types. Right now we only have the one. We've only made the one base prefab. We could use the prefab for multiples if you wanted to slower or faster enemies maybe. Or we could just make more prefabs. But anyway, let's define this one. We'll just call it Hawker Red. And we don't have a weapon yet, but let's get our prefab into there. And let's just give it a default speed too. Just drag that into there. So we just have the one enemy type. That's really good enough for a playthrough here. We can give it a try. One thing I want to do here is drag our spawner under the camera 
just so it follows the camera along. And that way our enemies will just keep flying around. We don't have to create splines going all the way up the battlefield. It can just use the ones it already knows about. And what I'm going to do is come back into our code and let's just make sure that our enemies always start at position zero on the spline. Now you might want to change that in the future. Say you wanted to spawn three at a time maybe. So you could make this actually part of your builder. You could set start position on the spline, for example. Uh, but for now, let's just put zero in and assume they always start at the very beginning. Let's put a note here in case you want to change it in the future. The value has to be between zero and one. Yeah, that's about it. Let's have a look. Here comes our first one. Okay. Looks like they're all on the same path so far. Okay, now we're seeing some variety. Yeah, let's stop. That's about, looks like eight enemies there. Let's just zoom in. Let's focus on them there. If you select them all and press F, you'll get them all in your inspector window. So you can kind of see how they've spread out. That looks not too bad. Let's drag the game window over and we can just watch it uh, side, side by side and watch how it's... Well, that's exactly what we wanted. Just before we wrap up here, I just want to have another quick look at the prefab that we made earlier. Um, I just want to make sure that everything was nicely zeroed out there because if anything is off zero, like it's, it's okay for the shadow to be off zero, but your the main model should probably ride right on the spline itself. I mean, you could offset it a little bit, but you gotta keep in mind that it's not going to run right on the spline and might not be exactly what you are expecting. Now, just to demonstrate that extension method, I'm going to remove that spline animate component from the prefab. And as you can see, it got added no problem, and all the settings are exactly the way they were set in the builder. Uh, just for interest's sake, let's change our scriptable object there to be a little bit faster and just see how it goes. That looks pretty good. I can see I'm getting a little low on memory and my frame rate's dropping, but... Uh, they're definitely moving faster. So that's about it for this video. Uh, the next video is going to be all about projectiles and collisions and blowing things up. By the time I'm recording this, there's a weekend sale going on on the Unity Asset Store with some really good uh, projectiles that I'm going to use in the next video. This won't be required to follow along, but if you're interested in that, I will have a link in the description. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you in the comments below.